Hello and welcome to this presentation of Intel AMT Commander and Introduction. My name is Ilian St. Hilaire and I want to spend just a few minutes to go through the basics of Intel AMT and Intel AMT Commander. If you're not familiar with Intel AMT, it stands for Active Management Technology and it's a feature available in vPro platforms that uh, allows a administrator to take control of a machine remotely and go ahead and repair it, fix it, do a whole bunch of stuff um, no matter what the state of the machine is because basically it's additional hardware. One of the nice features is that it's uh, available and you can connect to an AMT machine even if a computer isn't soft off or uh, it's crashed or so on, so on and so forth. So let's get started. Uh, first of all you'll need an Intel AMT machine on your network and you'll need a separate machine to run Intel AMT Commander. You can't run it on the same uh, machine. So I'll assume that you have a normal Windows machine here and you're running AMT Commander and what I can do is right click on network and say add an AMT system. I can type in an IP address, a username and a password. Uh, of course this assumes that your machine, your AMT machine, is already provisioned in small business mode. I hit OK and there you go, my machine is added. Now at this point I just added the machine but I didn't connect to it. This is just to add the, priv the uh, credentials to that machine. One way to, to add a machine is to just do it manually like I did. The other way is to do network discovery. I'll go ahead and type two IP addresses that I want the, mach the uh, I want to scan between. In this case I'm scanning and finding three machines on my network that supports, support uh, AMT. So I can click on one of the machines, this one I didn't add yet, click Add Computer, type in IP address, name, password, remember, and say OK. Now I have two machines set up here and before I can even connect or before I connect to them I can click on this web URI and go into the web page of that machine. So I'll go ahead and log on, say OK. This web page is offered to um, machines that uh, anywhere on the network that can log in and you can log in and get this web page even if, if the machine is in soft off. You can take a look at uh, what the AMT machine's hardware looks like, the event log, this is a development machine so it has lots of things on the event log. You can click remote control and power cycle the machine. You can take a look at network settings and so on and so forth. So this is all very good and it's very useful if you uh, only have a w web browser you can go and log into your AMT machine anytime you want. Um, but of course if you have Intel AMT Commander available you can do a lot more than what's available on the web page. Now the next thing is to go ahead and connect. It takes a few seconds and Intel AMT Commander will basically use the web services interface of AMT to uh, connect to it. Now you have a whole bunch of features here you can you can dive in once you're connected to the machine. First of all the hardware asset. This is the ability to go and take a look at all of the system, uh, all of the hardware, the type of BIOS you have, processor you have, memory, um, all the modules, the media, disks, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of useful to know what's uh, going on in your machine, what hardware you have. A second important feature of Intel AMT is the ability to set up network filters and policies. So this will be um, looked at in more depth in a different training video, but basically what you can do is add filters, add policies to block and start traffic. For example, I have a policy here called drop all, and if I activate this, all the network packets going through and from that machine will be cut off. Now, I say that, but it's, uh, really there's an exception. It's all the, machine, the network packets going up to and from the OS on that machine, but you can still access AMT regardless of what policies you uh, enable. So another feature we have in AMT is the availability of this NVRAM, uh, non-volatile RAM. You can uh, use up to 198K in this case uh, of flash, spare flash that's available on the platform to store and read and write uh, value, um, a whole bunch of data. Now, the nice thing about NVRAM is that you can read it and write it without 
waking up the computer and you can also do it regardless of um, the hardware that's available on the machine so that's kind of useful somebody could change the hard drive for example and this nvram storage would stay the same because it's all on the motherboard another feature we have is the event log it's a little bit like the one we saw on the web page earlier and um, in a future training video we'll go more in depth into this now one of the most important part of AMT Commander is the ability to go into remote control tab and take control of a machine. This brings up a window which is a VT100 terminal, a bit like uh, your old uh, modem terminal that you had in the past. Now with this you can take control of your machine remotely in text mode. You also have at the bottom integrated into the UI uh, this feature called IDE redirect which allows you to mount a floppy disk and a CD-ROM drive onto the other machine and uh, and if you want you can boot on that machine have the other machine boot on your floppy and your CD-ROM drive um, and of course you have remote control which is the ability here to uh, cause the machine to reboot into a certain state so um, let, let's just go one by one here first of all remote commands uh, you can do a normal reboot, boot into BIOS, boot into, uh, onto my redirected floppy or CD-ROM. So I'll just go ahead and do reboot to BIOS. It takes a few, uh, about 30 seconds here for the machine to reboot and get into the BIOS screen. But what's cool about it is I can do this uh, over the network and don't have to be on the local machine. So I see the boot up and there you go, I'm on the network um, on the, in the BIOS and I can go and change all the settings and save this, uh, the BIOS. Now once I'm done with this another thing I can do is set up my um, redirect and this disk, disk redirect uh, will do that. So first of all redirection start this is when do you want to have it uh, have this ID redirect start and uh, usually you select gracefully uh, or on reset on reset will only start ID redirect upon the next reset. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do gracefully here. I can select a floppy image, I can select a CD-ROM image, or I can use my actual floppy drives and CD-ROM drives. Once I'm done selecting all this, I can say redirect activate, and you'll see redirect activate on the bottom here. The drive will pop up, and you'll see zero mites sent and zero bytes received. Then I'll go and say reboot onto the floppy disk, say go, and the machine will take a moment and it will now boot, but not using its floppy drive, it will use my redirected floppy drive right here. So uh, I have a DOS uh, image that's bootable in my, um, my floppy uh, redirection here, and as soon as it gets hold of it, it will start reading that image. You'll see a little green light whenever it reads, a little red light whenever it writes, and there you go. I boot it into uh, DOS, and I can go DIR, and as I do that, you see the byte count go up. So that's it for ID redirect and uh, terminal redirect. This is just basically a couple of the features that AMT provides. In uh, subsequent tutorial videos, we'll go more in depth in a lot of other features, but that's it for my basic introduction. So thank you and have a great day.